I'm gonna get started. So if you look uh, on the um, uh, on the page number four, I'm gonna start with just the natural nail anatomy, just so we are on the same page of, on my you know speaking term and just general some um, uh, just uh, terms that we need to uh, understand. You know, okay. So the first thing I want you to understand is the the na the the free edge. So that's the end of your, if you look at the, the book, that's the end of your uh, natural nail plate. Can you see that? It's just a visible part of the natural nail plate and it's sort of made, uh, and it's made up of, from keratin. So the, and the, the natural uh, part of the nail is called nail plate, okay? so. Right, right there, and what's underneath is called nail bed. So don't, if you are a, if you are a nail technician, please don't misunderstand the between the nail plate and nail bed. When you talk about on top of the nail, it's nail plate. What under it is the nail bed, okay? Because I know a lot of time when I watch other educator or someone doing the live, they always say oh, nail bed. So please don't do that because um, again, nail plate is the, the visual part of the nail, okay? And the end of it is called free edge. Okay, and all the way uh, near the, around the cuticle area, you have the uh, Luluna, which is the, kind of like the half moon part, and that's the area where you work uh, um, the most because that's near the cuticle area and, of course, proximal fold. So the cuticle is the, you know, the, uh, the white clear layer that you, that's shedding when you buff or you lightly file. Um, the fold is actual living skin, so you don't want to work too closely um, or abrase too much around proximal fold, um, proximal fold, okay? And the side of the nails we call lateral fold, which is the skin uh, along the sides of the, of the nails. And so that we mainly will talk about that a lot, okay? Okay. And the terminology, everything, I just go quickly, but I did give you the, the, the description. So if later when you working on and you know, you can refer back. Um, okay. So if you turn back of the nail and there's a skin that I know I need to talk about that is that's where the, 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 the skin underneath the free edge is called hypernychium. And that the area is very important when we work uh, with forms. Okay. Because some people might not have it, but I know I do, and you need to learn how to um, uh, work with it, especially when you have a client like that. Like that. The hypernychium is, is, if you flip the nail over, let me show you real quick, it's the skin part right here underneath the, the free edge, okay? And that's determined how you uh, mold your fold or trim them or tailor your fold your form to fit under. Some people don't, but I do. Cause, um, and these actually can uh, grow out a little bit through time. You don't see drastic, drastic growth, but uh, it's a way of your nail um, grow to protect you. Because as I wear, like for me, as I wear like long, long nails, naturally you will grow slightly more hypernychium because that's the way your body trying to protect your nail. Does that make sense? Because I know when I was um, years ago, I don't, I didn't notice my skin coming out as much, as much but through the years, I noticed it's kind of slowly growing out a little bit more because uh, that's again just part of your body. Uh, trying to protect you as you have more um, extension on your nails, okay? So yeah, that's the area, um, that's, these are the area we will talk about a lot later uh, from the natural nail area. But now let's move to the ex enhancement part. If you have enhancement on your nails, um, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna have the extension part. Let me, let me have this. So let, if you look at this nail right here, Okay, uh, let me real quick. So uh, this part, let's just say, uh, I'm just because the nail is too small, so let me just do this real quick. So this part right here is called extension, which is the, 
you have enhancement where you extend out the, the nail. Okay, so this part right here is called extension edge. It's not free edge anymore. Okay, so remember that. When this part is the natural part, the natural nail, we call it free edge. But when you extend it out, it's called extension edge. Okay, so we, uh, that's the part that, I, that you need to um, pay attention to. And uh, when we talk about, um, I'm looking on page five if you follow along, okay guys? So if you um, working on extension edge, the first thing that I need you get to pay attention to is your upper arch, okay? Your upper arch right here, okay? That whole thing right there is your upper arch, okay? And now this right here along the lateral side is called the lower arch, which is the, the lower part, the arch right there. That's your low, lower arch, okay? Right there. So this part is the upper arch, okay? And of course the apex, which is your highest point and where the thickness of your nail should be. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. And you don't need to build like a mountain high to have a good apex. And this is where we need to um, work on too. I know a lot of people think I have to show it. I mean, it needs to be the highest you could visibly seen at every angle, but it doesn't have to be like thick and mountain high. Like I said, we're gonna talk about that, okay? And of course, when you look at the nail, the, where, uh, where the convex and concave meet, it's called the hairline, which is, if you look at this nail right here, Tiffany, if the hairline, if you look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna point, you see the top view right there? I'm gonna code, like, give me a second, okay? The hairline, is the part right here. It's the thickness of your convex and concave meat, which again, the convex is the exterior contour of the nail, convex, okay? It's the exterior contour of the nail. Okay, concave is in, in, interior, which is when you flip the nail over, it's actually from the free edge all the way to extension edge, that's called concave. Okay, all right. And the C curve is the curvature of your enhancement. So when I'm talking about the C curve, it's just the curvature of your enhancement. But the thickness of, we talk about the concave and convex is the hairline. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah? Yes. Okay, because later yes. when we build the nail, I need you to know where we're looking at so you know exactly how, uh, where, and how. You understand this, you understand how to build a nail a lot better too. Okay, so yes. yeah. Okay, another thing, um, C curve. Uh, yeah, C curve. So in a, in a salon world, we don't do 50% uh, curvature because that's mainly for, um, I would say that's mainly for uh, competition. But in the salon world, we usually work about um, 40, uh, 20 to 40% curvature only. Because I feel like C-curve is just too much and a lot of clients might not like that as well. But um, in the competition uh, arena, they require 50%. But in the salon world, we only need from 20 to 40% and depend on the shape and length, of course. Okay, that's what we need to talk about this when we build a nail. Okay, that's your end of your extension edge. Okay, all right. And of course, the I apex, I'm sorry. Do you have a question? I can't see the video. Now I can see you and now you appear. Okay, okay. So you understand about the C curve though? Yes. Okay, if you get it, just give me a thumb up. Okay, so the apex, again, we need to talk about the apex because the apex will change when you work on a short, medium, or long length, okay? 
and the area of the apex when it's short is usually in the stress area right here. So your stress area right here and your extension edge is right here. So usually it's in the middle because it needs to be balanced. So on a short nail like this with Tiffany, the main key here, you see, I left it more mainly in the center, right? You see the curvature right there, the convex, you see it? How it's slowly sloping yeah. and that's short, right? Like I would say medium, okay? And look at the long nails. If you look at the shape, stiletto right here, look on the side view, you see it? It's different. Yeah. Right? And yes. versus a square. The apex gonna move, depends on the length and the shape as well. So we're gonna talk about that. So just keep that in mind. The short nails is mainly more in the center of the nail because you need to have a balance. Because if, if, if you have a short nail and you move the apex all the way here, so right here it's gonna be bulky and then you're gonna keep it, that you see is how it's so unbalanced and the nail doesn't look good. Or if you wanna do it up here and then you slope down and too short, it doesn't look good either, right? Because it's too bulky. So it, you need to have a nice curvature like this to give it more like a balanced look, okay? So just keep that in mind. We're gonna talk more about it as we go along. Okay, so next, let's talk about form. One thing I want you to understand that form depend on the length of the nail and depend on the shape of the nails, you have to do sculpting slightly different. I mean, there's rules for you to follow, but it's the, the way we put forms on, it's all dependent on the length of the nail and the shape of the nails and that person hand structured as well. So three things that you need to consider when we do forms. Um, is, is that everybody okay? Do you, anytime you have questions, just raise your hands, okay? Because if I don't see you guys have questions, I assume that you guys understand and we just keep moving along. Because we have a lot to cover and I just want to make sure some of the theories, you guys need to really understand it before we move on. And if you want me to take it slower, I'm okay with that. I have no problem with that. Yeah, some of you took the class. I'm, I have no problem going a little bit longer if we have to as long as you guys are all okay with that. I just wanna make sure you, you spent all times wisely and follow along as well, okay? So anytime you have questions, just either put on the chat, Tiffany constantly on the chat, follow along with us, or you just raise your hand and Tiffany will let you um, uh, ask your questions, okay? But um, form, it's, again, I just said earlier, I cannot stress enough, this is why I love sculpting form versus tips. Because tips, like I said before, tips have gone a lot better now because we have straight edge tip now, which is the best tip that you can use. But sculpting forms is really great for you to customize your client's nails because you, as we all know, not all 10 nails created equally. And same thing with mine. I have one going up, the nail kind of go up and one curve down and one nail is straight and the other one is, you know, crooked. So we all have to customize and that's why your client pay you extra for it because even though they have imperfect hand, nails, but you make them look perfectly after you're done with it, right? So that's our goals, right? So sculpting forms. Let me pause a little bit right here and let me show you a couple forms too um, because I feel like there's so many variety in the industry that I, I feel like I wanna take a little time to focus on the, the type of the forms and what you need to look for in a form to help you navigate to your, um, your process, okay? All right, so you look on my screen uh, right here. I have a lot. I have a lot more, guys, trust me. But I just, I didn't want to overwhelm with you guys. But um, let me grab this first. The clear form, this is my old, old, I don't know if she even have this anymore, but I always, I have few of this and I always keep it just because when you do gel, it's best to have either the 
foil gel like this, like the new CND form or the clear form because the gel will um, cure through it. So it, it's really good for the, uh, with the gel. But I, I don't like this type of um, form, especially even with gel, I feel like it's not sturdy enough. And then I feel like um, uh, it cure really well, but I feel like it doesn't hold on as much. Uh, the, the new CND one, uh, which I do have a video coming out soon showing you how to use the, this form as well, it's really great. I love it because it's like, it made from like a foil-like material, but I find that if you're beginners, I don't feel like you should just go one, grab one yet, even though it's really good form, and I'm gonna explain why later, okay? But I find that there's like, again, there's a lot of different type of forms, their sizes and different, um, what do you need to look for in a form? So I feel like in a, a form, you could see the first thing I'm gonna show you is look for this thing right here too. First of all, I, I like the form when it has more grids and guidelines for you. Those are the best because you can really customize your form easier, easier when you can follow the guys, the guidelines. Like, like the more details they have, the better because it's really helped you to um, maximize your, uh, the usage from the form. Like one of my favorite form right here is Koopa. Not because I, I work with them, but you know, I, in a way I was helping him design the process as well. So when he, uh, when Richard Herder working on a new form, we, we recommended what we needed, and I feel like he really listened to our nail techs and really designed a great form. So I feel proud of this for myself because I was part of that process. So yeah, so I find these, uh, he designed it really well where you could have it for salon use right here, or you wanna like, you know, fantasy nail art, or you want a different length. I know now a lot more clients are asking for longer length, so these are great. Um, but yeah, you can see there's more details on the uh, form and pay attention to the butterfly on the side as well because you need more um, room right here to really pinch down and tighten down the concave of the, the nail. So this part is really good versus this one where it's really short. I feel like sometimes when people have like a bigger finger, you can't really pinch down the bottom of the form and that doesn't hold the form as well. And then it doesn't give you enough support. So it might pop off in the process of you sculpting or it's just, um, uh, it doesn't hold up as well. When you look for a form, really try to look for the adhesive too because that matter, okay? Because you don't want your form pop off again in, during your process of sculpting. So um, be mindful about um, that. And again, the size as well, because you could see some the size uh, small and some a little larger. Like I find this one is really good because sometimes like a bigger finger, you need a bigger size, but you can customize that as well. But I just like it because it, I like to find a form that give me a little bit more room so it's easy to fit m most of the nail fingers, okay? So yeah, and again, adhesive is good, and the only way you can test it is by playing with it. Um, I know, in, you know, with COVID, we cannot go to nail salon or some of beauty supply don't even allow you to go there and play with with samples and stuff. So, but if you could um, at least take one sample and just play with it because see how it hold up, how it curve, and look up really patent to the lines. You see this one really basic, which is fine. Like I said, for if you already seasoned nail tech, you can, you know, use anything. But I feel like if you beginners try to look for forms that give you more details as much as you can, because uh, the guidelines and the grid really helps, you know, when you tailoring the, the, the forms. So yeah, any questions so far? Yeah, we good? Okay, all right, let's move on. Um, all right, so let's talk about square shape. I'm gonna, let, let me give you one hot tip that I feel like uh, minimize your s stress a little bit. Whether you scope uh, in the salon, 
uh, typical shape we're working now. Recent, uh, I feel like recently, square has been really popular or taper square has been very popular. But a couple years ago, stiletto and almond was really popular and then slowly moved into coffin. And now I feel like this year we're really moving into square or taper square. So in, I'm not talking about uh, you know, the competition, but in a salon world, there's two um, style shape that you need to focus on is square and stiletto. Because square, you can, uh, from square technique, you can use into edge, um, uh, taper square, Russian, um, Russian um, almond and all that, because it's all started from square shape architect. Okay, stiletto, the same technique that you use uh, in stiletto, you can scope coffin and almond, uh, the classic almond. When you do modern almond, it's based on square sculpting architect. Is that, do you guys confuse that at all? Okay. So two shapes that you need to pay attention to is square and stiletto because these two architect sculpting style will take you in different ways and different shapes. So from square uh, sculpting architect, you could use modern almond, uh, taper, squ uh, taper square, like what you call Russian almond. That's all square architect sculpting style. Uh, techniques, okay? From a stiletto architect forming technique, you can do coffin. So coffin basically it's just from stiletto, stiletto shape, they just lock at the front, that's it. So stiletto, you can make coffin classic almond. That's it. So that's the two main key that we need to focus on today. Once you learn the square and stiletto, you can, that's it. That's all you need to focus on. Everything else is just from that. That's why when you look at the, the, the people don't understand is when you look at some of the artist's work and you're like, oh my God, that shape, this and that. If I look at the shape, I could tell, is it square or stiletto? Because you could see it right away. And this is where we're gonna focus on, right? Does that make sense, guys? Yeah? So. What are these tips? What are these um, uh, structure that we need to look for? Okay, so if you look on the page six, let's start with square, okay? Square, I feel like slightly um, harder to, to learn than stiletto, um, but when you do it right correctly and you do it right, it's very beautiful and you will love it just as much, okay? So from a square point of view, I did this so to give you a visualize where you, um, where you place your form. The first line that you really need to focus on is the, bear, the, the form. It has to be tight right at the stress area, okay? This two area right here, you need to really make sure the form fit from there, not from here. Anytime when you're sculpting a form, when you see a gaps, it doesn't fit nicely. Because anytime you see gaps, it will, the product will seep under and you will have a weak concave. And that, you don't want that, right? So the form, it has to be nice and straight out. Okay? So the two lines you really have to worry is that line. And this is just the top view, okay guys? So make sure it's all straight, okay? It's all straight. And depend on the length too. It's not just about being straight, but it depends on the length. So now let me look, take a look on the side view. That's when you change. It's the same page, okay? Look at the, that's the top view, and this is the side view right here. And I purposely put the, the file right there so you can see where you can um, start and where you end. When you work on a square nails, 
there's four lines that you need to pay attention to. Four. Okay, and I'm gonna draw you a, a, a nail to give you, give me a second. Okay, actually right here, you see the C and D part right there? You see the line right here? When you work on, a, on the, the form, that line is where you almost parallel to the middle of the finger. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me give you a, a, a one a tip first. Okay, when you work on a client sculpting a, a form, you have to look at their finger, each finger, okay? Don't look at, just because you do this one right doesn't mean that form will be applied to every finger, okay? Each finger, you have to sculpt differently. You're lucky if all four or all five the same. Great, less work for you. But you have to look at these fingers differently because in most, um, in common, through the years that I'm working on my client, I find that the index finger, always different than other than the other because most likely this index finger is crooked or the middle finger is crooked. So how do you know if you form your um, form straight or not? It's by looking at her knuckles. Okay, if you look at the hand, you have the, the knuckle right here. This is knuckle one. Okay, this is, that's one, this is two. Okay, and this is three. But when you do nails with sculpting or tip, you don't need to pay attention to number three. Pay attention to one and two. Because most of the time, if they, 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 they finger crooked, usually crooked from here to here. So, but here, one and two is almost like your, uh, your balance point. So when you work on the finger, whether you do tip or form, the rule doesn't change. And it doesn't change when you use different products either. Sculpting is sculpting. There's rule to it and you just have to follow along, along with it. So if you know how to do sculpting, tips should be a lot easier because the rules apply the same. Okay, so guide, use your one and two as your guide and that's your, for so one and two, you can see here, if you look at the top view, her fingers crook it too. You see it? But if you measure from her finger, yes. you will have a crooked finger. Yes. But if you go one and two, you see how it's different? Yes. That's your number one line that you need to have. That's your one line, your, your uh, con convex line, your top line. Okay, so if you if I follow this one and two, it's gonna be better, right? Because this one, her knuckle straight. You see the difference already, right? And the same thing, you do each yes. finger at a time. So that's the first line, okay? The second line that I need you to pay attention to is the side of the nail right here. The side. Let me let me point. Let me the side of the nail right here. And my finger's crooked. Same thing, you take it from here to here, that's your balance right there. Because each finger, look at this crooked. If I go straight, if I go straight, look at the top view. If I go straight, you see my nail going down, right? Even though I scope this, I pull it up already, but my natural finger is naturally my finger pointing down. So your, yes. your line on top is your, your hold on. let me look for that page. So this line right here, your middle line, this one had to be parallel. You know, give me a second. I draw this finger, because this one I feel like with the, the form on already, you don't really see what I'm saying. So let me, give me a second, I'll, I'll, I'll draw a better picture for you right here, so you can visualize it. Just think about, um, you guys remember Angela Johnson's little nail skit that she did, 
and she was talking about how when the nail tech was finished with her nail, her nail was like, she kept saying that she was t talking about her nail and her, uh, she's like, why is my finger like that? She asked like, why is the nail crooked? And the nail tech goes, your finger, it do like that. Do you remember that? She said that, like it do like that. She wasn't wrong. Her finger was doing like that. So just think about your, your client's nails. They're always slightly a little off and that's so normal, but it's your job as a nail tech to help you know, the nail look as structurally sound. Um, and that's the beauty of uh, sculpting acrylic, right? You get to kind of build that nail, really create something that wasn't there. And that, that's what gives your clients that really beautiful look and um, something that will last longer so that you can, they, you can come, they can come back to you because they feel like their nails are um, just like structurally sound. So they look beautiful and also they feel great. Um, and that's the beauty of doing acrylics. Okay, so I just created this drawing. I think this will understand you, help you. So the top view is your knuckle, right? The top, this is the top view, right? The top right here. So you have this line. Are we still talking about square, okay? So the top view, it has to be lined up with your knuckle, two and three, right? This line. But this line is your lower arch, right? So it has to, from your free edge, right here. Your free edge right here, it needs to go straight out. It's a must. But how you know you get this straight line? It's by parallel with the side of your finger. That's how you do it. That's how you check your work. Use your, uh, your client's finger as a balance point. The top view and your side view of your client, make sure it's straight. And the reason you have to do that because some of your client, if they have a standard shape, great. You put that form on, it fits straight. But some people have ski, ski lope nails and one curved down nail. They curve downwards, right? So how you correct that is by taking that middle line as a, your balance line and put that form up more or curve a little bit down a little bit to give that balance straight lines. Does that make sense, guys? Do I confuse anybody? Yes. So now you know how to check your nails? Okay. All right. So I call this line is A, the top line. Let's do that A, okay? And B is this line. So your A is your upper arch. Your lower arch is B. Okay? And another parallel wall is on the other side is C. You see here? If I'm looking at this view, on my right side is B. On the other side, line is C. Right? The video is stopped. Excuse me, the video is stopped. Oh, because your internet. Yeah. Ask her, because your internet is lagging. Is, that, is anyone else having technical issues? Are we good? Give a Tell her that you can watch this again later in 14 days. Yes. Also, if you guys didn't know, well, when you guys purchase this course, you also purchase a four, up to 14 days access to this course. So after it, um, after this course is done, we will edit it and we will provide you a link that you can go ahead and rewatch at your own convenience up to 14 days. And it's 14 days after we send you the link. Um, it takes us a little while to kind of go through it, but we just want to give you guys a, a 14 days from the day that we send you out the link. Um, so again, if you miss something, you want to rewatch re something over again, we will provide you with this course and you, where you can rewatch over again at your own convenience, kind of similar to a YouTube video, but just a rewatch re of this course and yeah. Okay, so you have A, B, C, 
and your balance right there in the middle of the finger is called D. All right, so what that means, your A need to parallel with B, B need to parallel with C, and C parallel with D. So all four lines for square nails, it has to be parallel to each other. No, ex no exception. It doesn't matter what fingers, what type of crooked or how skewed the fingers are, it has to be. But now you know how to line them up, right? Check your knuckle point. Check your balance on the side of the nail to get that parallel lines. Trying to ask, C is called? Question mark. Oh, C is just on the other side of the parallel line, uh, China, because on my right side is called B. The other side of is a C. Here, let, let me zoom in. You see it? C is just the other side of the, 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 the lower arch. So A is your upper arch. B is your lower arch, but it's both sides, right? So that's B and C, right? And D is your balance of the side of the nail. So they all have to parallel to each other when you do sculpting uh, square nails. And whether you do short or long, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, we want to remind you guys that right at this moment, if you guys can't see, make sure to put, um, if you're on Zoom, put the view on speaker view um, instead of gallery view so that the screen can be wider. Um, and Marta asked, can you review how to get D again? Oh, D is your balance on now, right here. So how do you, yeah, how do you figure that out? The knuckle, right? One and two, right here. So use the side of the nail and use that line, the center. And from that, just go from there. And it doesn't have to be all the, when I say middle, I mean, you can make sure that the line is straight. Just make sure. The reason I did this, my nail naturally hooked down. So if you look at this one, you see how, because I, I extend this nail longer. So I, I, I shorten it down so the shape slightly change, but in realistically, if you look at this view, the line should be parallel to this one. You see it? You see it right there? So that's your middle, it's the side view of the, the, side view of the, the, the finger. The, the line A is on top, and I told you follow knuckle one and two, right? So the side view, that's D. And B and C is two lines right here, the parallel line. So that's why A is on top, right? B is on the side, on this one, and this one right here, both sides of the lateral size. And D is the line in between. This is how you check your nails are perfect. Does that make sense, guys? Marta said yes. Yeah. Okay. So no confusion there, because this is very important. So if you have longer, then make sure all the nails long the same extended, the same way. Okay. And the, the way you put on a form, another way to check too, is your barrel of the form right here. This is why I give you this shot, because this curvature is determine your C curve right here. Okay? That's the picture on page six. This is the barrel view. And this is how you know that, that the round C curve, it will give you 50%. But you don't have to, at least 40 is, should be great. In order for the form to be this round, and it is, again, if you want it more taper square, um, taper square, then of course the form slightly more in, like more taper in. It doesn't have to be this round, but I'm talking about this is a perfect square, okay? So that's just the end of the form, that's how it should, because you don't want to pinch this form all the way in when you do a square. Okay, 
Horizontal what? The view, because you can see the whole phone. Oh, okay. I understand what you're asking. Um, uh, Katina will get to you real quick. Uh, also, we want to remind you guys that if you, I know some of you guys are watching your phone vertically. If you would like to watch a better view too, you can also flip your phone so you can see better um, as well. So just a little reference. Um, but Katina, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. And I have a question about huh? page six. Mm -hmm. um, it's the second picture that says C and D. You're looking at like the side profile. Uh -huh. You were talking about earlier how when you uh, apply the form to the nail, mm -hmm. um, that it needed to be tight on each side. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But my question for you is how tight does that need to be? And the reason why I ask, and maybe you'll get to this later, mm -hmm. is because once I apply a form and I make sure that it's tight on it on the side and there's no gapping in between, mm -hmm. you know, on the side, I find that when I remove the form after applying the acrylic, there's always like an indention or either it's very difficult for me to remove that form. So I was just wondering is that acrylic shrinking and making it harder to remove the form? Is it too tight? And what's causing on the side of each side of the form that's underneath the nail uh, plate there, what's causing that indention to occur? You mean right here? If you look at this picture, you're talking about it right here? Yes, yes, yes. So once I remove the form mm -hmm. from the nail, you see that there's like this like indention that's there or it's like uh, it's either when I remove the form, there's it's very difficult for me removing that area. And it's like it tears, if you will, from that area. Yeah, because you, either you pinch it too in or like you pinch the form too much in, it gets stuck in the, the stress area. Um, when you sculpting, all you do after you're done in order to take the form off, it's just to pinch the form in and move it downward. It should come off fairly easily. If you stuck, that means you either pinch the form in too much and then you, your acrylic or your gel gets stuck along with the in, inside the corner with the form. But if you do it correctly, which I'm gonna go every details, we are gonna dissect every angle, every detail for each shape especially with square and stiletto, because like I said, once you master those two, everything else just follow along with those two shapes. But yeah, I, I know that was um, something that I, I think it just because the way you put the form, it didn't snuck in or it too tight and you probably, probably tried to pinch in to fit it tight. So you pinch in a little bit too more and then your product and the form kind of got stuck at that corner. So yeah, but we will talk about it. Okay, give me a second. I'm gonna draw you a picture. I'm gonna dissect everything you see on the nail, okay? So, uh, Tiffany, if they have any questions, let me know. Okay, if you look, I, I kind of make it a little bigger because I wanna see you, I want you to see the line clearly. Um, if you look at the picture, just basically the top view of the nail. I just, but there's few lines that you need to, so we already talked about this straight line. Anybody confused of that straight line right there? So that's your knuckle one and two. Is that right? Right? Thumb up, you guys. That's line one. Good. So that's line one. Okay, guys? Line one. That's your center of the nail. Okay. Let's just say you have extension edge. So that will be your line two. This is where you extend your nail. This is your free edge right here. Oh. Hi, Lane. My yo. Hi. Yeah, my yo mà đấy. Yo hoài không được, đợi một tiếng mấy tầm hồ luôn. Mới vô mail mới thấy. Ôi trời ơi. I said hello. Chắc chắc lên 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 bấm cái 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 lên cái lệ ấy đó. Nhưng mà không sao đâu, bây giờ cứ follow đi nha. Còn uh, tại cái video này á, uh, lên có thể coi tới 14 ngày. Nếu mà coi mà không hiểu cái gì thì cứ cứ gọi một là em có thể cho số phone hoặc là cứ message cho em là em chỉ lại cũng được, ok? 
Dạ. Nhưng mà tại mà, bây giờ... Mà mình coi ra mình cái link để coi, mình không biết hồi cái đợt gì rồi, không biết coi ở đâu luôn. À, Tiffany có gửi, à. con gái mình có gửi cho cái 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 email mà chắc lên không có hả? Dạ không, không có oh. được. Ok, em sẽ gửi lại cho không sao đâu. Hả? Dạ, dạ. Em sẽ gửi lại, nhưng mà bây giờ lỡ bắt đầu, thôi giờ cứ đi theo đi nha. Dạ, dạ, dạ. Ok, ok. So, bây giờ cái này là cái bàn tay nè. Em đang mới dễ là cái ngón tay thôi nha. Để mình làm, ok. So, the center of the nail is line one. Ok. The extension edge, if you long, then that's two. If it's short, then if it's usually around here, then that's two, two. I'm just make it a little bit long so we all easy understand what that line is. Okay, so this extension edge. Mình đang làm cái square nail nha Lan. Okay. Cái square nail là spur, uh, giấy số 6 á. Trang số 6 Ok, so you, we all understand that. I need you guys to understand each point I'm talking about. So we all moving along. If you don't understand, again, ask me questions or type it in, okay? So that's line two. Okay, if you look at the nail, we divide the nail into technically three parts, but you see four because you see the middle line, which is right here. I'm going to use a different color for each line so you can see. Let me get my color uh, marker so then you can, I'm gonna try to mark every line different color so you can, can easily see this. So the center one, let's do, that's the, the most important one. Let's do that number one. That's red. Okay, that's one. And let's say number two is your extension edge. That's, this is square again, but it's applied to almost every shape, you guys. It's like your checkpoint. That's two. And if you divide each side, that's line three and four. Just so you know, it's not that important, but just so you know that, um, that it's divided because it does matter when you it go into another shape because this line right, right here will give you the kind of the guide where the shape should be. So that's three and four. So three is along your, kind of your parallel, I'm sorry, that's, yeah, is your parallel, I'm sorry, right here. That's just your imaginary line. The green, and three and four is your lateral side. So again, Number one, number three, and four, for a square nail, it has to be parallel. Remember, we talked about A, B, and C, but if you look at top view, the lines, yes. one, for a square nail, one, three, and four has to be parallel to each other. And of course, the side is the balance line. You need to double check that as well. But we're talking about the top view here, just so that you know where we're looking at. Okay, so if this line right here, the green line that I put, it only helps because if you do another shape, let's just say you do from extension here, you want a coffin. Let's just say you want a coffin. So this is sort of where you start your coffin shape. That's it. But we talk about that later. But just so you know, each, the nail shape, it's all, It's like we, we are engineering, we are, we are building a nail, just like you build a home. There's structure to it you need to follow. So this is why I draw this line just for you to double check your work, okay? So for square nail, for the sake of the square nail, it all has to be straight. Square nails, the lines, everything has to be straight, that's it. Remember, A, B, C, D line, it has to be straight. Okay. All right. And it's also important when I did this line, the green line right here is your invisible line. 
This is where, from here, you taper down the product. And this is where it gets thinned down as well. So this is another way of for you mentally thinking when you apply the product. Mainly the product will be in the center, of course, right here, right? I would say right here, because that's your apex area, right? But right here, it had to be thin, and this part has to be thin, but on the side, this is where it gets thin as well. Mentally, that's where you need to thinking when you apply the product. And the thickness of the nail is uh, it's gonna be one and a half millimeter. Maybe to two, maybe, but no more than that. So the, the, the extension edge is need to be one and a half millimeter thickness. Yes. So give you a sense of idea, the thickness of the nail. So when you build the nail, you don't overly apply the product. I would say apply around two millimeter and shape it down to one and a half millimeter. That will be a perfect world. Am I taking you guys too far? Well, we all good? Lang here, home lane. We all good. Katina, you have, again, okay, go ahead, Katina. Unmute. On your diagram, uh -huh. your diagram you, that you uh, reference here, mm -hmm. uh, three and four, lines three and four specifically, when you start to apply, whether it be gel or acrylic, um, should do you recommend, and you're probably going to get to this, <laughs> starting to build the nail, like applying the gel or acrylic at the point, I guess, kind of like visualizing it starting at three and four so that it could be straight out those side walls so that it won't be bulky, if you will, or over those, over the edge of three and four? Should you build straight out from the free edge of three and four? I guess that's my question. No, no, the three and four, that's the important I'm gonna take you. The three and four start where, okay, if you look at the, the, the top of the nail, right? We have cuticle, right? Mm -hmm. Right here. This is your, cuticle area. I'm going to draw on my nail myself so then you can see. Um, so right here, guys, that's your curvature right here. That's your cuticle area, right? Look at this natural nail. Because I make this a little bit longer. The side right here, that's starting your apex area. Every nail will be the same. Because if you think about it, the natural nail, if you look at the, my nail, my natural nail from here to there. Yeah. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Right? That's my stress point and that's right here. That's where you're counting. So the three and four is basically from here to there, your extension line. Did you get it? Yes. Everyone clear on that? And this is why I make a point, a dot right there. Just so this is where I'm gonna go next. Because the curvature of your cuticle approximate fold is right there. And once that curvature meet at the straight line, that point is starting your stress, that's your apex area. Everybody understand that point? Do I need to repeat that? So from looking at the natural nail on my nail right here, that is my sort of that point right there. And it's the same point right here. Is that once that curvature meet to that straight line, that's the point of your apex. And from there, that's the APEC need to be. That's why I circled this area. I know the picture is a little bit bigger, 
but this is why you have to draw it on the natural nail, visualize it, okay? Because I have to make it big so you can see it. But if you look in your natural nail, look at your natural nail right now. Why don't you pin down? If you have a natural nail, can you guys show me? You said, can you show your nail again, please? Right here. So let me look at the side view. You see that, that curvature in black, but that dot in green, that area, you see that starting my apex. And if you look at side nail, my side, that's sort of my apex starting right there, isn't it? You guys see that? That's my starting point. Yes. You see more clearly now? Now you understand why you need to look at these and understand why? Yes. So the three and four is that line from here. It's the line from here, that green point all the way down. So that's three and the other side is four. That needs to be straight. It doesn't matter what shape, it doesn't matter what length, it has to be straight. Regardless. So now when you build the nail, don't you have a better idea where you start and where you end, right? I'm excited, guys, so let's move on. Does that help a little bit, Katina? I know I'm gonna show you a plot, the application too, but the reason I want you guys to visualize what I'm telling you right now, so when you apply, it's a lot easier, right? So that's your curvature of your, your cuticle, right? Your proximal uh, fold and your cuticle right there. Okay, from that, that's three and four. This, the green, it just in your head, if you do visualize that, I need you to know that that's the thickness of the product, mainly in the center. And it's thinning out as you go on the side, just so that you know you don't apply too much, that's all. Okay, all right. So now let's go to this. So let's go to this drawing again. Remember, we go line A, B, C, D is all parallel. So this is a side view. This is the top view, right? So this is a side view. This is where your apex is. Think about this. This is where it is. So that same thing right here. You see it? How I connect that? Same thing right here. And usually this is about for square. This will be 45 degree, 45 degree slope. And this is where it's easier if you know how to place your brush when you apply it. And that's your brush angle, which we will talk about that later. As long as you know where it's supposed to look, how it's supposed to look, you need to work on that with your application. So the curvature of the side view is about 45 degree angle right here. And this line has to be straight as well as your lower arch and your lateral side on both sides, it has to be parallel to the middle of the finger. Okay. Let me let you guys process. Let me explain to Lane in Vietnamese, but I'm going to repeat about the same thing. Uh, Lane, hồi nãy em vô á, là cái làm em, em bắt đầu cái square nail. Thì em vẽ một cái móng tay á, là nếu mà Lane coi trong cái, cái trang số 6 á, là square nail á. Ở trên á, cái, 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 cái hình đầu tiên ở trên cái, cái hình á, là cái, 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 cái phone nó phải nhìn thẳng ra. Là bắt đầu từ đâu cho nó thẳng là từ cái chỗ, cái cái địa điểm của cái cái con tay là mỗi một người khách bàn tay là số 1, số 2 là cái nấc cổ gì? Giống cái cụ trợ, giống như cái cụ, phải cái cụ trợ là cái đó là gì? Nấc cổ là gì? <cười> Tiếng Việt em cũng không rành nữa nhưng mà thì bây giờ cái này nè, lên coi nè, nếu mà ngón tay khách á, 1 với 2 nè là cái địa điểm đừng có coi cái ba cái ba thường thường nó méo mình phải lấy cái 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 thước á mình đo một với hai là nó thẳng 
thì nếu mà theo cái ngón tay này á em mà lại thẳng một với hai á lại lên thấy không cái ngón tay nó méo thì lúc mình làm form á mình phải nhích nó qua một bên again you guys if you look at this nail one and two if you cook it right how you place your form you have to move to the opposite direction to compensate the lines So if not, it's not straight, how you compensate that? You have to move the form on the opposite direction to compensate the, the, the length. Does that make sense? Because if you follow this lane, your line straight, but actually realistically, it's all crooked, right? Okay. So lane here, yeah. So cái, cái line này á, là nó phải thẳng ở trên nè. Mà cái dưới này cũng phải thẳng là tại sao? Là tại vì mỗi cái bàn tay á, mình nhìn bên hông á, nó phải thẳng. Thì trên đây mình làm nó thẳng, mà dưới đây mình phải làm cho nó thẳng. Mà hai cái đường này trên giữa này cũng phải thẳng. Bởi vậy em phải nói là làm cái square, cái line này, line này của là cái bên hông của ngón tay nè. Với cái C là cái bên hông của hai ngón tay nè. Với cái line này nó phải thẳng với đôi, tức phải đi đôi song song với nhau. Thì cái shape nó mới ra đẹp. Yeah. If you want to, uh, like again, this part of portion, we will have you and we watch this again. So, take my picture and just draw it out so then you, you have it for you. All right. Okay, let's talk about that. Now the curvature, the hairline is really important for square. I make it big right here so you can see it. So the naturally the curvature, the hairline and the C-curve, it has to be like this. So when you look at the nail and you check your work, what if you have it too much on this side or too much on this side? So this is where you look at the hairline of your nail and check where you need to file more to give more even. Does that make sense, guys? That's how you check your hairline, which is the C curve of the enhancement. If you look at the line and it's not even, if it's too much on one side or on this side, then you need to shave that more or sometimes too thick on top here You cannot have that. It has to be one and a half thickness all the way around. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's take five minute break for anybody need to grab coffee, tea, or bathroom break. Stretch out a little bit, just five minutes, and I'll come back. Okay. Isn't that good so far? I'm excited. <laughs> starting to make sense. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. No, it's not. But now you know your checkpoint, right? Because before you just yes. blindingly apply product. You don't know where the form looks. You don't know where the, a product supposed to be. But now at least you know where it's supposed to be. And I'm not going to tell you just because you take this class, you're going to get it perfect. But at least you know your checkpoint. That's why I give you all small details. So then it's, it's like your right. good checkpoint. And the three and four have really helped because I fight so much with them sides. I do, we be in a battle. I'm like, oh my God, like what is happening here? Like I have runaway sides and they just be like so wide and it's so frustrating. And then I have to go and try to file them in. So to visually see that it needs that the product needs to, to stay within the boundaries in my mind, in the boundaries of the three and four <laughs> so that I can have control over the product. That way my, my nails won't look like two nails in one. So <laughs> it helps. Yeah, no, definitely. Like I said, I wish what I share with you today, somebody shared with me years ago, it won't, then it doesn't take me as long, but no, this is why I love sharing with you guys. because. Like I said, it takes a lot of practice. I'm not gonna lie to you, it does. But at least now you know where to look for, like 
before I'm, I'm the same way. I just, I think it's square if I, I make it look good, but then my line is crooked. Like, like I said, my nail is like, they, they don't create equal. Like this one, all the way down, grow downwards. I have one slightly straight and this one grows slightly upwards. So when I scope my own nails, even with one hand, I have to do three, four different type of, uh, you know, um, forms, sculpting form, because one I have to scope, tilt it up a little bit more, like this one, I have to sculpt it really more to give it more straight line. And you know, it's coming from learning and practicing, you just have to do that. Yeah, but I've I'm never thought about creating, um, I never thought about and focusing just on those two main shapes, the square and stiletto to take you elsewhere. With, with different types of shapes. See, you know? and no one share that with you either. No one say no. that. They want to make complicated, so they try to stress you out. Right. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. Oh, you're welcome. Oh. I know. It's it's. Trust me, what I share with you, I, I just can't wait, because I really hope you guys, I guarantee you, if you practice every day, at least once in six months, three to six months, you can definitely see a major difference in your nails. I can guarantee you that. Even just practice one nail at a, one day, one nail, you know, one day at a time and focus on square and stiletto. I'm just telling you, focus on those two. Squares, I would say a little bit more challenging than stiletto, but you will get it. Oh, you will love it. Not just get it, but love it. Uh, These are like the blueprints for a house. These are blueprints for the nail. Yep, perfect. <laughs> All right, so now that you know how this, um, um, the square looks like. So for taper square, it's pretty much the same. I, I would say the rule is just um, the form when you do it, you just have to pinch a little bit more in. So then the, 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 that way, um, your your shape will be more square, more taper in so it's just the way you pinching the form all right so it's the shape the top of the shape is it's about the same but you can see here the the side of the the side of the i mean the top view you can see it's it's more taper towards the end so you just have to pinch your form in a little bit more to get that that taper square look but the balance line a, B, and C, it's all stay the sh same. See, what, that's what I told you. Once you learn that square, the basic, the foundation of it, everything else just kind of follow. China said, I need the nail tip show shirt and coffee mug, please. <laughs> yeah, we're both wearing our <laughs> nail tip show shirt. She's wearing one, I'm wearing one. Huh. We're actually trying, these are our testers. Yeah, once we get a perfect one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll keep, We'll keep Whatever you guys else. updated, yeah. yeah. But right now, these are our tests, so <laughs> if you guys like it, we can definitely share. Um, and as for a mug, we this one is a no. I'm, I'm holding no, a I Disney haven't. mug, <laughs> so this is my Disney mug. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll I, show you. I think we do have we we do have mug. But anyways, sorry, <laughs> it's just we're trying to come to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's talk about the form. How you know you race up and down? That's important, right? So now we know how the size supposed to be, the line supposed to be straight, the top view, you know where the product should be, the apex. I feel like square at the apex, actually the easiest way to do it, I think, uh, because if you just follow that line where it's 45 degree angle, pretty much you would nail it, okay? But how you know where to raise the form up and down to get that line? That's the big questions, and I noticed none of you asked me yet, but I'm gonna tell you right now. Okay, if you look at the natural nails, let's go back to page, uh, either seven or six, it should be okay. Seven or six it will be the same. Let me see. Okay. Oh, let, let, okay, if you look, uh, let, you know what, let's look at page six, because I feel like that's a little bit dramatic, dramatic, so you can see the difference. Let's look at page six. And look at the side view that I have, which is the middle picture in the, in the book. The reason I put the ruler in there, the reason is that you need to tilt the form up and down, depends on the fingers, the lines, but also her natural apex. 
Because, uh, again, if you look at your clients now, I, I think this tip I showed you before, if you look at the natural aid, uh, natural nail, if you press down slightly, like just say you put a little pressure down, you see the whitish area right there? See, this is all pink, yes. right? But if I press it down a little bit, that's her natural apex. It's usually right there. You see it? And look for the highest point of the nail. And that's where you want to line up your form. If you put the form, if you want it short, usually the form slightly higher to meet the line. And if the nail longer, then it doesn't raise as much. But the apex right here, it needs to meet right there. So my form will be right there. That will be, give me a straight line. Yes. Does that make sense, guys? So yes. what's that mean? If you go back to my, I give you another page, which I think this is a really good drawing as well. Refer this a lot because this is where I give you the picture. And if you look at this at page 10, depend on the type of the nail that you have, you have to raise it differently. And this is where it's guide you. You see the lateral, if you look at this nail, it sloped downward, which is my finger, my index finger right now. If I want it straight, and if my nail apex right here, I have to raise up really high to get from this one to this one, the line straight right here. My, you look at the form, it has to raise high, right? But if on a standard nail, if you look at the picture right here on the other corner right here, if the standard nail, you can see the line. I draw the lines. We have the lines ready for you. This is a really good um, the animation on page 10. This will keep you um, referenced later. For the standard nail, because it's naturally nice and straight on the balance line, you see the form doesn't curve up as much. So it's all depend on your client's nails. This is why you learn to tailor and customize the shape to get the balance but you know where to find the balance is where the apex, the natural apex, and that where the end of that form meet. So you have to line up your natural apex to the line where the form, or the length of the nail that you want to extend. It has to be straight. So when you line up your natural apex and the length of the nail, the end of the extension edge, it has to be straight. And from that, your product naturally goes straight too. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. So this one, the, the, the last picture on this corner on the page 10 right here, that's when the nail is up, going upwards, right? So then that means you have to put the form slightly downward to get that even line. If you have that client that would upward curve, why it go upward? So if you tilt the form all the way up, that means your line not gonna be straight, right? So you have to put the form slightly downward a little bit, but just meet the natural apex to that end of the line. So then you have a straight line on top, your A line, remember? And that line, it has to be straight with your knuckle one and two. Does that make sense, guys? Yes, yes. So that's how you line everything up. Everybody okay? Yeah? Good. Natalie, are you good? Okay, good. Like I said, don't feel like, don't feel bad if you have questions. I, I love it when you do because um, that's when I know you guys, you know, un, you need to, we need to slow down a little bit or we, I, I just keep going forward if I don't have any questions. But this is a good, I give you this one, like I said, I want you to keep this as a reference 
always have something to follow back on. Okay? Anybody have questions? Anybody have questions about this one? So this is just standard type of nails. If you have standard type downwards or upward nails, so this is how you're going to place your form differently. That's it. But this top, the line, it has to line up with knuckle one and two. Okay? All right. So that's good. So you now you know how to tilt the form up and down, right? Does that make more sense, guys? Okay. So taper square the same. Again, taper square, Russian almond, pretty much the same. Just how you place your form, that's it. All right. Let's go to another shape, which is the ladder or coffin. Again, it's all the same, but let's talk about it just so then you know what to expect, okay? So the same rule, same. The top of the view of the nail, it doesn't change much, right? But the only change right here, because we can't have a straight line out on the lateral side, because now you're changing shape, you're changing um, the line as well. So the line here, it has to be right here. Let me do the orange. And this is where you, your stress area, you're starting from your stress area, guys. And you slowly have it down. Ideally, is line between the three and four. But I, I want you to know too, when you have a long length, a coffin side, the long length, make sure, make sure it doesn't go into tiny like that. It doesn't look balanced. Okay? Because I know sometimes your client requests that type of look. If they, and if that the type, then either ha explain to them it's more balanced if you have it a little bit more, you know, just wider a little bit so it look a little bit more balanced. Otherwise, it look off, right? Same thing when it, the short nail and they really want a, a stiletto shape, it doesn't make sense either because stiletto shape, you need to have a little length to have, to give a nice stiletto shape, right? So the shape of the nails also determines um, the length that they want to make it more pleasing to the eyes. And if your client requests something that you feel like it's not aesthetically correct, explain to them, you know, in terms of balance of the nail, it doesn't look good this way. Or offer them another shape. Like instead of stiletto, ask them if they could do a short almond. That way it look better. Instead of stiletto, just so that the nail look more elegant too, right? Okay, so at least we get that. So the stiletto, everything, the number one line is still the key right here. That's line up number one line. It's still from the knuckle one and two. It doesn't change, guy. The line, the number one line is always the center of, and parallel to knuckle one and two. Okay, so that's, and you, if you want a long stiletto, then we have to make it long out. So now you see how you line everything straight now? Stiletto. And if you want a coffin, again, if you scoped stiletto, usually coffin, it just, you lop it off. That's it. So that's just the top view, okay? And if they want a short coffin, the same thing. They can't have a, a small, you know, coffin either. Doesn't make sense. So the line has to be wider to make it more sense. More like a taper, 
square almost because if it's the coffin too short it look weird it, you, you can't either so like i said the the length and the shape you have to discuss that with your client and make sure i would say at least you're happy with your work don't let your client dictate you the length and the shape and then if it not if it doesn't make sense don't do it because i feel like you just fighting against your work so yeah but the so the top view the line right here it has to be straight out always it doesn't matter what shape guys the line right here to your stress area is always straight always it doesn't matter what shape it's only determined what shape that's where from the stress area that's where you determine the shape and the length, okay? But from here to here, just knowing that it's always straight. This is the area I'm talking about, this line right here. It's always straight. Always straight out. And it's both sides. Katina, go ahead. I'm sorry I'm asking so many questions. No, no, no. I just want to make sure I got this right. Uh -huh. um, so based on your diagram, which is very, very helpful visually, when it comes to forming your shapes, whether it be a stiletto square, that is coming off of this stress area free edge, right? The creation of the shape. So if a client says, I want a stiletto shaped nail, it should be uh, the focus will be on the free edge or the stress areas when you start to create that stiletto. Otherwise, everything else is straight. Do I have that right? Yeah. So what I'm saying is from stiletto, you can do coffin or classic almond. Right. Right. So for square, right. you could do square, taper square. So the square, you go straight out from that point on because that's your checkpoint. That's what I'm trying to tell you. This your your cuticle, that's for your checkpoint is from here to here straight. And from here, your stress area, it's all depend on the, 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 sh the length and the shape of the nail as well. Because from here, if it's square, you go straight out, right? From here, you curve a little bit in. So slowly transition from there. But that doesn't mean when you shape, doesn't mean you thin out too much there either. You have to know how to shape and the application, it has to be there so it's not too thin. But the key point is it has, it start from there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. To get that straight lines or to curve in a little bit, it needs to be from there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That makes sense, guys? Okay. Yeah, visually, that's where you need to focus on. Okay, so from, the, from that, that's the top view, right? What about the side view, right? Let me, let me do the side view for you again. So the side view, pretty similar. Let me draw it out and then I'll show you. Make it a little bit bigger, but you can see. I'm gonna make it a little bit long, so dramatic a little bit, so you can see. Okay, so your apex stem here. If it this long, guys, same thing. You need to check this line. Need to be parallel with your middle finger too. No changing there. Always, always. But instead of going straight out like a square, uh, like square right here, we're going downwards a little bit. I'm making a little bit more dramatic here, but the nail doesn't have to be that dramatic. If Tiffany going back with a stiletto that I've done here, you can see that's almost matching to my drawing, right? Honey, you can see. Oh, give me a second. Let me give you a side view look. You see it? The line is straight. The top 
you see the apex, obviously, because this is a long nails. You need to show the apex, and from that, gradually going down. Am I right? Because yes. if, you, if, if you keep this line straight, this nail will go up. So it, it won't be balanced. Mm. Right? The reason square, yes. the reason square, it has to be straight out because you have the curvature. This one, it doesn't have the curvature to support your apex. So the line has to be straight. Same thing, the line, this line had to be parallel with the middle of the finger to keep it straight. But how do you meet this line? And that's where I'm gonna show you next. This line, it has to be at your stress area, which is right here. Remember? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Marta asked, do all shapes have a lower arch that is parallel to line D? Yes. Your lower arch always, doesn't matter what shape, that's what we say, something that you have to keep. That's number one rule. It doesn't matter what shape, your lower arch always has to be parallel with line D. Perfect uh, question. Thank you. Marta, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's number one rule. It is, that rule doesn't change. Yeah? Okay, so now, how do I get that straight line? So if you look back, I said that's your stress area right here, right? Your stress area right here, guys, from the side view. So when you place your form, it has to meet there. That means you sort of have to lower your form slightly downward. So when you do classic almond coffin stiletto, you have to tilt your form down slightly downwards so then it meet your lower arch, which means the end of the the end of the length of the nail, it has to line up with the lower arch. But that lower arch also has to parallel with line D. And what I'm going to do the, the form to show you more. But just visualize that a little bit in your head just to give you a head start, okay? So with this, if what happened to the almond, a shorter nail, again, your apex is going to change. Because if your almond short so your nail it has to meet and your cur the apex is going to be different now you see the apex move it doesn't it's not right here as high anymore it's more in the center now because the length of the nails also determine what the apex, because if you put the, the apex right here, you see it looked too much product heavy in the back. So when you do the almond, which is usually shorter than the st stiletto, your apex move down a little bit. Anytime that your length is longer, your apex move lower towards your cuticle area. So if a shorter nail, I guess move your apex towards your free edge, if that makes sense, to the center of the nails. So visualize that when you do the application. It helps you so much. You know where the product's supposed to be. And same thing, the side of the nail, always thinning out. Doesn't matter what shape, the side of the nail is always thinning out. Are we good? 
China commented and said, yes, it makes sense now. Always wonder why my stiletto always looks deformed, LOL. <laughs> well, because when you do stiletto, naturally, it has to have length. So when it has length, your apex has to move. So that's why. It makes more sense now with the shape, guys, isn't it? <laughs> I love this. Okay, so let me, so same thing with the coffin shape. I only did the coffin shape in here because I figure you guys are more interested in the coffin and stiletto. But I figure the almond is about the same, so that's why I didn't want to repeat that. But if you look at the coffin, the form, same thing. I'm looking on page eight. And you know the coffin with the form, the, the, you see the side of the form, the form pinch in a little bit more in to give you more taper. It's not as wide as square. You see that? And then if you look the side view of the form, you see ice right there. That's my stress area. It has to be lined up and lowered. And how low it is, is also the, the length of the nail that you want to achieve. So you keep measuring that and keep consistent with every finger, your set will, be come, out, will come out evenly. Whatever you're doing to the first nail, that's why you, have, you, you want to find the form with the numbers on it. So then let's just say you want to aim for number three or versus two. Keep consistently line them up with number two or three. And let's just say you want to line up more on number two. If it's short, you don't line them as um, you don't line them as high. Because if it's short now, you want to lower it a little bit more, so then the line will meet. But look in this picture. Does it help you guys? Let me know if this picture helps. I try to find different ways to help you. So let me know if the graphs really help well so then I could help more students next time. Sharia has a question. Okay, Sharia, you wanna ask your question? Um, when you were <clears throat> describing the stiletto nail and taking the form down a little bit so that D could be in line, is that the same principle when you have a fingernail that uh, the curve is going upward? Because you're already bringing it down a little bit to correct mm -hmm. their fingernail for running up, so you bring it down more? Yeah, with the curvature that, yes, if the people have like their nail really sculpting up, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You have to go down a little bit more because their nail is naturally going up, right? And then mm -hmm. just use your stress area as a point and connecting to the end of that form. Let's just say you want it longer, then you don't have mm -hmm. to go down as low. So, so that's why I said you have to play with the form and just to up and down and just use a, the file or the ruler, really playing with it. Like turn the side of the nail, see where that form meet. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna later after after we talk all this, I'm gonna show you how you put okay. the form on to meet that 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 stress area. But at this point, okay. I just wanna I understand. yeah. At this point, I just want you visualize what I'm trying to tell you. So when I do the actual form, it makes more sense, and you can see ah okay. But I think right now you have more um, the visualize of each shapes already. I think that helps a lot. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Marta, mm -hmm. Marta asks, is there a guide for calculating what the height of the apex should be? Um, no. This is why, um, well, it's hard to say because the natural apex is different every finger as well, as well as different on every client. And I, I said it earlier, the natural way of looking at the natural nail Look at the apex is when you press it down, you see the apex where it is. This is only for square. 
But for stiletto coffin or classic almond, you have to look at the stress area right there. That's the lowest point of the nail. Does that make sense, guys? So each shape, you have to look at different part of the nail differently just to line them up. And she said height. The height, again, the height is about one and a half millimeter or two. Thicker than your natural nail. So think about a credit card thickness. That's about one and a half. I said about two millimeter application and fire down to one and a half. Yeah, Martha. Yeah, does that make sense? So, yeah, what I'm what I mean is like the height. When I build my nail, sometimes I feel like I build a little mountain. Mm -hmm. and the height from let's say the side fold to the top of the apex. Instead of coming out maybe like this, let's. I'm gonna exaggerate so you can see it on the mm -hmm, video. Mm -hmm. And make it a really big mountain, instead of like a little mountain. So I don't know how high to make it. Okay. Again, that's why I, I said that when you build a nail, it doesn't have to be dramatic. I did the nail slightly dramatic just so then you can see my stress. Um, you know, the apex, the, the straight line, but in realistically, you don't have to have a straight, a uh, high mountain. And again, thinking in terms of the thickness of the nail uh, is about uh, credit card thickness. You know, it's like, it doesn't have to be um, thick. It doesn't have to be, just think of one and a, one and a half or two millimeter, uh, the, the height, and then five down to the middle. And you, and the line, that's why I give you the line to measure it, to give more like which one is coffin, like this, the, the square. You see the lines more straight and parallel. The coffin is sloped it down a little bit. So that will give you general idea of how much product you put on. Now I got it. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. That's why I said it's all, the, the key here is know what shape and what length that you are building first. That's number one key sculpting is to know the shape and the length. And of course you have to build along with that according to your client's shape. But the length and the shape of the nail determine how you put the form on. And keep it consistent with 10 fingers pretty much it. All right. Are we ready, guys? Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, yeah, let me talk about the, the shaping the file just quickly. So then just so then later when I shape the nail, then you guys, so the side the nail, you want to keep filing on the right side to keep the line straight. Make sure you put your finger right here holding the file like this, okay? You can, you don't have to use the same file as, um, as mine, but I'm just saying, keep this finger on your right. And your left, keep it like this. Keep your thumb out and, and keep it straight. But as use the fingers, hold against it so then your line will be straight. That's how you get perfect straight. And then for the side, you can hold your nail, your file like this, what I have here, the side. If you're working on the left side, you can go up or down, just like the side of the nail earlier that I gave you, to give it more contour look right here. You can shape either go up or downwards motion to contour just around that side. So now when you contour the nail, you know where you contour, right? You're not blindingly do it anymore. You go towards the middle. You don't touch the center as much, but towards the middle. To go back and forth to give that contour and thin look.
And then the extension edge, you just go up and down. That's it. So pretty much for extension edge, like if I work on a client, I just go like this. I can go up and down. Like you move it in a, like almost like 180 motion, or you can go up and down like this. But then I never go towards the apex area. That's how you keep the line. If you're for square, keep your file straight to get that straight line. But for stiletto or coffin, tilt it down a little bit and go up and down a little bit, but not towards the apex, just where you, just like here, you see the side view? I don't know. You see it? So then you, when you fire, you don't fire the apex. So then you have that line straight. Yeah? Or you can divide mentally, you can divide into for the, for, for the free zone right here. You can visually design for a line and maybe work one area at a time when you're first starting. Just go one side, one side and a little bit in the center. That way you don't go everywhere. Just to help you shaping at first. Does that make sense, guys? And the apex, I'm gonna give you the quickest tip with the application and the e-file to get the perfect apex. This is where e-file come in and give you really a nice apex and you don't mess around with it. I don't like to um, uh, hand file my apex and my, um, with the hand file. I like to do it with sculpting, with a brush, and then just lightly brush it, clean with the uh, e-file, either with the carbide bit or the sanding band but I'm gonna give you a quickest way to build Apex without any fuss when we do the application and the e-file. I know a lot of people, that's one area they struggle. It's the Apex and the cuticle area. It's like, but I have a way to do it, minimize your work so quick. All right? Yes. Okay, so anybody have questions about that? And the lower arch, guys, when you do this file, the lower arch, keep it straight and just clean the upper arch, I mean the lower arch. You see my file, I don't go all the way against. I mean, I do a little bit, but most of the time I don't go because you don't want, that's your stress area. This is a sensitive area and you don't want to over file that as well. So keep straight, just maybe the first little bit at the beginning, but as you clean the lower arch, try to angle it more like this, so then you're not filing against it. And then when you file, I would say stop every three to four stroke. Don't keep going on and on and on and on. Like I would say four or maybe five stroke, stop and go on the other side. Don't go on and on and on. Do three, four time on this side. Try to do the three, four time on this side. So try to keep it consistent as well when you do shaping. Okay, so let's start with, if everybody okay, don't need to take a break, I can go ahead and start with the form sculpting on square. Everybody ready? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I know, I'm excited too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so fun. All right, so let me prepare the nail. Uh, when you do sculpting, prepare, preparation is really helping you to uh, do the form slightly better too. So when the nail shape like this on a natural nail, try to hold the file about 45 degree angle like this and file. The reason is that because you want the bottom of the nail slightly thin so the form can fit easier. If you do straight like this, chances are the nail will be thick the same length. You see, if I file like this, the nail will be thick, right? But if I file like this, the nail will be thin on the bottom. Am I right? Because yes. the way my file hit the nail. So if you file like this, that means the nail, the bottom nail can be slightly thinner so the form can fit better. I mean, it's not really like a huge tip, but I find that helps me a lot. A lot of people just file, file, they don't. So the natural nail, it has to be straight out, but slightly rounded. It, don't do a square nail on a natural nail when you do the, the, the shape. Do the kind of round the shape a little bit 
when you do the sculpting form. And I find same thing with the uh, tip, round it off a little bit on the free edge, just so then it's easier to fit the form. And angle the, the file in 45 degree angle, so then the, the bottom, the nail was slightly thinner, so then it fit, hit the form much better. Yeah? And you prep like you would like any other prepping. I'm just gonna do the E5 here. I'm using a fine sanding band. On a natural nail like this, I like to use a, um, a fine sanding band. And I just hit the cuticle area lightly. I just top the skin down when I file. I go one direction. And right now I'm very I'm going very low speed, you guys. I'm probably using between four to six thousand RPM. Very low. So then I can easily hit her skin and it doesn't hurt her as well. Because my job here is I'm not trying to embrace the surface, the nail plate really rough. I just want to tickle the surface and take the shine off. That's it. And then prep the cuticle at the same time. So right now, I'm just slowly going one direction. And you can see slowly, you see her dry skin coming off or the dead tissue coming off. And once I get to this side, I tilt her finger slightly towards my right so I can see the angle of the nail I'm going. This way is really good for prepping and cuticle work. I cannot stress enough how this simple technique really help with prepping and cuticle work. So with cuticle work, I'm pretty much do the same thing with a carbide bit. And if you look at this, how I angle my, uh, my, my hand piece, I'm not going like that. I'm going almost yes. lightly up, but almost keep it parallel as much as possible. Because right now I'm just slightly cleaning the cuticle and then just wanna take off the shine. And then, then I'll just do the rest of the nail plate very gently and take the shine off. And that's it. And you can see the cuticle much better already. And if I need to, let's just say some client have a little callus on the side, I can easily prep that as well and take the same sanding band and just slightly buffing that off just so then her callus is not gonna be as, as thick. Because some people have really rough skin here. So this is another way you can use that as well. Yeah? Okay, that's moving on. So now once I prep that, of course you can prep the nail with the hydrator and primer. Okay, if you need to go, uh, but for sake for the sake of the the nail, let's let's not do that. I just gonna for sculpting form. Let me find a form that will help easier. So let me start with Cooper. Let me see if this form. So now we know her nail is crooked, right? So we have to correct that, right? So I'm gonna show you that. Just uh, don't, don't do anything, just follow me so then you can see exactly what I'm doing. I am always use the, the, the tab to reinforce my length a little bit and put in the back. Because as you put product more on top of this, you need this to reinforce the, the form. Now, I need to tear this off. This is the key to when you do the sculpting, I can show you, okay? Tear this part off. Slowly mimic the shape a little bit. Just kind of take your fingers and the thumb, roll the form a little bit, and almost keep it to the shape of the nail, okay? The shape of the nail, keep line the, the finger or the hand straight perpendicular to your body. So then you can sit straight and know exactly where that line is. So now I'm looking at this line. I know because her, her nail, just like me, she has slightly the hypernychium. The skin underneath is coming out. That means I have to tailor my form to fit in because if I put it right now, you can see the side, it does not fit. 
right? Because if I stab her in more, it's gonna hurt her. And it doesn't matter what you do, it will not fit. So when you hit the form like this, you see the side view? You see that much ink, the gap right there? That's how much you need to cut the form. You see the gap right there? Look at the gap. So if her nail right here, that's her stress area. Can you see that? That's almost to the end of that. You see right here? Let me take the form off. You see the skin right there? That's lowest point of the nail, right? But right now we're doing square, so we don't need that. We need the apex. We need this angle when we do stiletto. But this will help you to do the form. You need to fit the form slight all the way tight to that area. So then the, the product doesn't seep under it. Does that make sense, guys? So if you measure this point yes. right here and to this free edge, you see how much gap you have to cut? That's how determined gap you have to cut. Make more sense now, huh? <laughs> I love this. Because before, I'm sure you guys didn't know how much you cut, right? You just do it. You don't know how much you cut. So now, you cut a much about the same length of this from that area to that free edge. You see how much length you need to cut. So that free edge, natural skin right here, right? So that how much you need to cut. So now I'm gonna take a round scissor. I love this curved scissor a little bit more when I do uh, um, sculpting because it allows me to cut. So now you have option. You cut, you see that middle line right there? I'm gonna do slow so you guys can see it. So I'm gonna mimic it and try to cut it from that point. And sometimes it doesn't hit right right away, then it's okay. That's that's where you kinda, you know, try and error, just kinda practice a little bit. Right? So now I go back. I try to do the curvature. You see now it fits better. You see it? Right against that. And it doesn't hurt her at all. Cause now I have room for her to fit my form. Make more sense? And for the client that have very voluptuous skin fold, the side wall, you have to cut the line as well. Cause in my case, I don't have to cut the side and the form can pinch down really nicely. But in order for my form to go really have a nice concave, I have to cut the side, the form as well. So then it, it, it gives you another, a nice curvature, which is the C curve. So now leave at the form like this. I have to cut, look at the line and just know where you cut. You can either use the scissor and just kind of pre-tailor the corner a little bit and go from there. So now I go take it out. I cut both sides the ears off, the side of the form. So then it, that way it's a lot easier when I do the fitting. Trina said, can you cut again another form, please? Okay. What happened? She didn't see that? No, she said it. No, that's fine. I can do it again. But you know where, how much you cut now? That's my point, is to know how much to cut. It just... Yeah. Okay, let me... Oh, you want me to do another form? Okay. Is that another form? Do it, do it, please. Okay, I can do another form. Wow, you, you're giving me challenge here. No, it's good. Cause the, the rule doesn't apply, the rule apply the same. It just, uh, like to say for instance, for this form. Um, so I'll cut this out. And I do the same, I roll it. I make sure I roll it almost to, because you leave it flat, it will change. Because when you curve it, it takes a little bit more form, right? 
So don't leave it flat. Take, curve it to almost to the shape that you want. Like just say you want it square. You curve it. And see that I, my form doesn't fit all the way because you see there's still a gap. You see it? It's the same gap regardless what form. So now I have to look at the side of the finger and determine that's my stress area, right? That's where that is. And I already mark it so you can see it. And from that mark to that free edge to her natural pink area, how much I want to cut. Not to the end of, I'm sorry, not to the end of the, I mean, I said free edge, but actually look at the pink area. Because this part is a nail. It's already out. But you have to look at the pink area of the, the skin. You see the, kind of look at the nail bed. You see that pink area? That's how much you, you measure it and how much you cut. So her pink area is right there. Right? So that's how much I need to cut. Okay. I need to get Am I right? That's how much I need to cut, right? So then if you look at this form, and look at the length that I cut, it's about really the same. You see it? Yes. Better now? So it doesn't matter what form you're using, the, the finger determine how much you cut, not the form. So the same thing, if I use this form, then I, I cut the same. I just cut that much. So I use the, the line right here at the center, and I just use that to cut the form. Okay, and I just take this part. Yeah, and now if I put it back, let's see if it fits. Hold on. This foil is not as flexible, so I'm going to cut a little bit more just so then it doesn't stab her on the side. But the, the length doesn't change. The length of the, the... You see now it fits better. Yeah, you guys see it? Right? Am I right? So it doesn't matter what form. Is the length of that determine how much you cut? And that's how you measure it. Okay? All right. Any more questions? That's a good one, yeah, China. Okay? So now let's go back to this. Okay. So now I have it perfectly straight and I cut the form. Right? So now, now that I cut, I know it fits everything perfect already. For the nail, for the form, I like to pinch a little bit on the tab, the front of the tab. I line the two tab up and just kind of keep that at least that will give me a guide to keep everything uh, symmetry. I don't, uh, I'm not gonna pinch all the way. You pinch all the way later depends on the shape of the nails. But for square, I know my barrel is supposed to look round, right? So I'm not gonna pinch too much, right? So now that I have this as a guide already, and now I have to measure the center of the line here. Every form has to center the line on top, right? And this line, it has to measure up the center of this knuckle one and two. Make sense, guys? Because if I measure this line, the center of the line right here, yeah, it looks center of the nail, but you know that knuckle one and two is slightly off on that side.
So I need to have my center line right here. So that means I have to bring my line towards my right side a little bit. Just the line, the form, it fit the same. Just the end of the line, move. So this, this one has to be straight. You know it has to be straight, right? So let's just say, I'm not, I just put it lightly up on, but I didn't pinch everything yet because I have to make sure everything line up straight first. First of all, I want to see my line straight or not. Does that look better, guys? On the side view. Right? Yeah. Now, how I hold the form up and down, now I have to look at here. If I lift it straight, the form doesn't meet yet because I didn't bring it up. Right? For a straight uh, line, I have to raise the form up, right? But I didn't pinch yet. If I pinch the form a little bit more, you see how it meet up? But I didn't pinch yet. Okay, so now let me make sure everything line is straight the way I want it. I'm going to cut this slightly a little bit more. I notice I have a little bit more room on this side. And then I'm going to line it straight. Okay, now let, let's say we have everything straight. Okay, let's just say I'm going to pinch the form. You see, as I'm pinching it, you see the form going up? Yes. Okay, so now you can pinch your form. And make sure everything line up straight on the bottom tab. Make it make sure everything line up. If you already have the line straight up. And now as I'm pinching it. And you want the C curve to be. You have to pinch more on the bottom here. To keep that C curve tight. So now that I have everything lined up, I'm going to measure it one more time. You see where the line meet? The apex right here, her natural and apex, it has to meet. So wherever the line meet, that's where the, your, 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 your line will be. And if I want it longer, I have to form the not as high, but if I want, let's just say I want to short to number two, that means I have to pinch my form a little bit higher. So then, and move the form a little bit higher to make it shorter. Does that make sense? So again, the way your form move up and down is determined by the length. If let's just say you only want number two on the two right here, your form had to meet up. That means you have to tilt it higher for the apex and number two meet yeah, up. Yeah, I know. I cut that picture wrong. Huh? I cut the heat up or not. Say that again. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought my, my, my mic was muted. <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. And now you see why I cut the line here on the sides. First of all, when I pinch down, you see the, 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 the curvature of the, the, the form going down. That means it's more taper. So then you have a nice C curve.
también lo. So when you do this, you have to do some adjusting a little bit because sometimes, <coughs> um, well, especially me right now, I'm not focusing, I'm talking, so it's a little bit uh, difficult, but keep working on it until you get it perfect. When you work on a client, make sure the finger straight out, perpendicular straight to you, and just keep the line straight. If, like I said, her finger crooked, you have to adjust it before you tighten down all the forms. And with this one, I'm gonna put it up a little bit more. So that means I have to tilt up a little bit more. Marta asks, any tips on not getting a gap between the natural free edge and the form? Well, that's how you tailor the, 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 this part right here. If you tailor this part well, it should fit perfectly. And the, the rest, you just have to follow the line. This part right here, tailoring the form, that's how you ensure all your gaps is taken care of. Yeah, each finger different, guys. The reason I have to cut a little bit more because her skin, and the hypernicium is, is she has really a uh, little bit more skin on at the free edge area, so I have to cut a little deeper, but not everybody. Okay, so that's why I said you have to look at the side of the nail, the stress point, and look at the natural pink area of her nail bed under and see how much you have to cut. I mark it just to give you a visualize of what to cut, but you don't have to mark that. So once you do that, you follow that nicely, you see how the nail will just fit perfectly as well. Does that make sense? You see the form here when I cut it? Cause earlier, if you look at this form, it was like this, right? Now I cut it, it looks like this. So when you tailor like that, it fits perfectly in. That's why I have to show you guys how to do it. All right, is that good, okay. Martha? Marta. Yep, got it. Okay, good. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. It's, I, I know it's a little bit stressful, guys, when you do this. I, I know it's frustrating a little bit, but trust me, the result that you're getting from it, you will love it. Okay, so now, I think I, you see the nail? I, I tilt it up a little bit more. Let me see how much. So now if I put the form, keep it straight, gun. Keep it pale now. I'm not measuring, I just measure the line right here. But for the nail, I have to touch the apex area. And you see now I meet the, I meet the line, right? So my line, I can scope out all the way to between two and three. Or close to three. Does that make sense, guys? You see it? Yes. So now that you do the one form, let's just say this is your starting form, one finger, that means you have to measure it the same way every finger. So your sculpting, your shaping should be lined up together. How you start the first one, where you decide the length or your client decide the length, that's where you want to do that. And let's just say the line doesn't meet where you want it, you either tilt up or down. If it's short, tilt a little bit up. If it's long, not as much. Just because when it's up, that means the line is closer to the, to the apex. Do you guys understand that line? How'd you get that line? Yes. Okay, so can we, yes. we, we can move on, right? So now let me show you the overall, the nail, and let me show you you see the, the side of the form, you see, the, you can see clearly the form is up, right? Give me a thumb up, let me know that you guys see the form is up. Honey, 
khác vậy lớp vô vậy okay you see the side view you see slightly up and when I if you see the gap there make sure you make it fit because sometimes you slightly going up there's a gap that means you just have to push it a little bit more because every time you do something the form is changed but that doesn't mean it doesn't do what you want it to do it can do if you do it correctly I feel like with gel it's slightly harder because gel, you have to get it really perfect. But with acrylic, I think you get a waste a little bit more. If you have a tiny little gap, it doesn't really matter much because you can sculpt, you can control the powder. Like don't let it runny so it doesn't seep through. But with gel, you have to have it perfect. Otherwise the gel will go through. So with acrylic, I feel like it's a little bit uh, forgiven because you can just Control the product a little bit so then it's not going to be as runny so it doesn't seep under the nail. But if you look at the barrel, you see how it, the form? You see now? You see the opening? That's also determined the shape of the nail. And if I want taper square, I'm going to pinch that slightly more. You see, it, it changed the shape a little bit when you pinch that a little bit. I try to do the form to the shape that I want. I try not to pinch it as much. Because when you rely on pinching, sometimes pinching can hurt your, your shaping as well. Sometimes you're pinching too much. You can uh, lift the product up or you pinch too hard and it gives you the indentation that you don't want. So try to get perfect as much with sculpting as much as you can. Pinching is only like help if it's the last resort. Okay, so let me do the, the powder now. Anybody have questions so far? You guys see the way I'm supposed to do it? You guys like it? You guys understand now? Okay, let me move on. Okay. Let me buff that off a little bit. But when you practice on yourself, it's okay to mark it because I feel like it helps you visualize a little bit. But try not to do on a client, of course. Do it on yourself or on your family, just so then you know where to practice. But that helps me a lot because I feel like a lot of people, when they tailor the form, they don't know how to tailor the form. But I, I feel like pointing that out is going to give you a lot, e it's a lot easier to tailor the form. Do you guys have any questions with the form so far? Katina asks, at what point should you pinch? You mean the app, if you want to pinch the acrylic? Okay, it, it takes about three to four minutes for the acrylic to polymerize before you pinch. But in average, I would say I would do the first application and then I go on to the next application and then pinch. But if you're new and you're not good with it, if you're just practicing, if you're waiting, just give about three to four minutes window. And then you, when you apply the product, you can touch the product after three minutes, you can see the heating you could feel the heat sensation. That means it's uh, curing. So by, by feeling it, you can feel it too. You know, but in average, in the time frame, and it also depends on the weather. You have to remember that. When in the winter weather, it takes a little, slightly, maybe a little bit more. Summer, probably quicker. So it all varies, okay? All right, let's do the application. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna make sure I have it like in taper. Okay. All right. Let me just use one color so then. I 
when you first practice, maybe, maybe maybe just make sure you practice with like, you know, like some nude color or one color, just so then you can see exactly um, um, how it's done. Try not to do like ombre technique or marbling technique, things like that, just so then it's harder to control the product. Okay. I'm just gonna use a nude, a nice nude product so you can see it. All right, you guys can see it. Like, of course you can do primer, everything in between, but now I'm just gonna, starting with this. So I'm gonna take, you can break this into different beads if you want to, but I'm just gonna. Try to take a fairly large bead. And then just place it at the apex area. I mean the free edge area, sorry. And just connect the powder to the free edge area first. Slightly warm, because I mean runny. I didn't know the control of the product, okay. Because slightly cool right now, it's not too warm, so I accidentally put too much liquid. But now with the first bead, you have this. So the next bead you take, you just take a little bit less liquid. Usually the first bead that you take, it's always like the testing point. So all I wanna do is just connect that free edge to the length that I wanted to, uh, to build. And then of course I'm taking the side of the brush and just kinda contour that product in and blending and then padded that in and keep the line straight. So that's why I said with the form, when it has a lot of line, it really helps because it gives you the line to guide you. So now you see how I take the side of the brush, will give you a little bit more pressure. And it also I roll and, and pat that product in. So then it keep everything thin. When you press it in, that means the thickness right there, right? And then you press that in the product towards the center. Every time you press, you see how the product get thinner on the side and push everything towards the center. So that's how you keep your product thin on the side when you do the application as well. And then of course, always use the tip of the brush to line the shape. I mean, keep the extension edge straight as much you can. But you see the side of the brush and then press that product towards the center. It's really helped to keep the product thin and it also gives you a straight line as well. Anybody have questions so far? The video is a stop. What happened? Um, okay. So I keep. Oh, it's all okay. The video is stopping. I think your internet. Yeah, internet is. It's your internet. We're not stopping. But like I said, if you missed it, you can watch the video again. No problem. Okay, so now okay. you see how one bead, I can extend out the, the nail and then extending out the bead. I just wanna quickly, you can see the product is not too thick on the, you see that? And that comes with practice, guys. I know it, it, it's, you're not gonna get it perfect every time, but just keep in mind, it doesn't have to be that thick. And I can build it up a little bit more as I'm going on, but just to give you some idea, don't go overboard with it. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna take another bead. And then I'm gonna place it right at the middle of that nail. And we're just gonna press everything in and try to build that slowly connecting that apex into the, my nail right now. I notice I have a little bit more than I want, so I'm just gonna try to thin everything down and blend everything. Because you already built the shape that you wanted, you see how now it helps you to build that nail out a lot easier. That's why I take the time to build that bead, the first bead, and that nail correctly. 
everything else you build afterwards, it just kind of follow along with it. Does that make sense now, guys? Do you see how I keep padding the side to keep my side thin and push more everything to the center? But once you establish that shape at the beginning, you see how it, the second beat so much easier? I'm trying to say, and you make it look so easy. Well, it, it, it comes with practice, I, I know. And that's why I always tell you, depend, don't go long, practice, don't go short either, because I feel like nail, you want to practice like a medium length at first. Always practice with medium length, so then you can see the shape, because sometimes short nail, you can't see the shape, but with long nail, it's too long for you to handle. So you practice, maybe just go number two of the form, don't go three. So that way, it just gives you the guide. So let's just say you build a, a, um, a small uh, bead, and with a longer nail, go medium bead. That's it. Just go bigger. Yeah, China. Um, I saw you build out from the free edge of the form. Mm -hmm. When I do gel, it's easier. I just a little more above the free edge. But with acrylic, the transition, I've always done it same like the gel and i'll always get that bigger bulk right there from free edge to the form and i will be filing and filing and filing and banging my head but when i saw you do it right at the free edge the acrylic to the form mm -hmm. and then you place your second bead right there mm -hmm. i saw how the how you say the just like this perfect so now, like, <laughs> well, it all depends on how you uh, you blending the, the 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 powder. Let me show you real quick right here. Uh, let, if you put it on, let's just say, let me take another color so you can see it better. So when you take it on a B, it doesn't matter where you want to starting. Let's just say you you don't want the bulk to be right there. All you do take the brush and thin that part up, push that up lightly, so then you, it's kind of like a, a nice thin transition. You see it? Because yes. you have to lay your brush, look at how I angle my brush, 45 degree angle, and blending that down, and then I slowly stroking that down. So then the, the connection is not thin. The first bead I want to do is establish the shape. That's all I want to do, I'm not building the thickness yet. So the first yes. bead is just laying out the, the construction of the, the, the shape. So your yes. goal is not to do a thick, but just to build out the shape. So like I said, the when shape. you build that shape already, then everything else follow a lot easier. Mm. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm talking, talking. Let me try to see the, if, it, if I pinch, it's slightly actually... If I pinch, it's, it's, it's hard already because it's more than three to four minutes. But if I pinch, I don't pinch right here. Don't pinch like that. You want to pinch the stress area at 45 degree angle right there. If you need to pinch. Okay? So if you need to pinch, and then if you didn't do quick enough, then you can pinch this too. Usually... I'm not talking in the salon. I can do everything in like three beats like this. By the time I'm done, about three, four minutes, I can pinch. Because this is why when we do sculpting, we always start the free edge first. Because on your natural nail plate, you have heat, right? When you put the bead here first, and then all the way here, because you know some people, they're thinking they do one bead application. With sculpting, you can't. Don't do that. Because right here will be dry, this part will be wet and you can't pinch. This is why when people do nail, I could see right away if they do tipping, I mean, sculpting technique or not, because sculpting, we always do the connection, the free edge to the extension edge first. Because this part, it has no body heat, so it takes the longest to dry. 
And this is where you need to pinch first. Because the body right here doesn't change. You can't pinch here. Because that's your shape of the nail already. The only shape you could change is the free edge down to extension edge, right? So you always scope out the shape first. But I talk too fast, I mean too long, so this I cannot pinch anyways. But if you have to pinch, that's where you need to pinch is from here, 45 degree angle, and slowly pinching downwards a little bit. With square, don't pinch too much because you want to keep that line straight. Right? So yeah. All right. That makes sense, right guys? Okay, so let's move on. So now I can do another, like, let, let me show you. If you, if you starting, you don't do one beat. I could do one more beat and try to blend it out, but let me show you slowly how you build the apex. Take a little bit like um, more like a beat, okay? And slowly dropping down like that. Because now I just want to build the apex. And same, I try to blend it up. But now I'm trying to build the apex area and along the side wall and make sure everything fits. So you see how I tapered the side to keep my product straight and, and taper. I, I angle my brush about 45 degree and just line everything straight and blending that down. You see, by doing this, you see how your product taper in? You guys see that? And it's more smooth too. So then you see why you don't have to do a lot of shaping. Only take as much as you can control. If you work slow, do a small bead or medium bead. Don't take a large bead because it's so hard for you to control. Your goal is to do little at a time, but get a smooth surface like this. But if you look, you, you do too big and you get lumpy, so much harder to blend and to shape later on. I'd rather you work on a small bead and have the thing blend and smooth like this. Cause you work slow, but turn around when you do shaping is a lot easier to shape. Versus to do too much at once, you can't control it and it's so lumpy, you have hard time shaping and more time shaping later on. But slowly you can see the shape, right? Already? Yes. So now I just have to take a small bead. And put it where the cuticle area and I want to put it almost like a hair away the cuticle area but the key here is look I angle my brush about 30 to 40 degree and push that product against that proximal proximal fold and that cuticle and now I'm just blending after I have everything lined up So now where it's not drying yet, I can still shape the nail. So I'm constantly <clears throat> trying to smooth out the product. Keep your brush a little wet when you blending out. So then with a little bit of liquid on your brush, not runny, but slightly moist. You see how it, that way your, your product doesn't stick to your brush. It keeps your brush clean like this. And now I look, I'm gonna check the side view. I'm gonna check the, I'm not done with the application. I'm gonna check the side view, see where I'm missing, mm. right? It's almost there, but I need a little bit more here, that's it, you see it? Just so I can have everything a little bit more lined up straight. So that's where you work, you work. 
And I know 